You're awesome, Donna Phil. So thank you. We have four branches present, not enough to represent a quorum, but certainly to have a conversation and make some recommendations or decisions. On our BOPA, the basis of political agreement, I want to highlight these areas of work that we all know. You can take a read at these. And I want to point out this last TBT to be decided upon, AFRICOM out of Africa. And is there anything you want to say about this, Teresa, or should I continue? Uh, well, no, I think I should, uh, because uh, for those who don't know, two years ago in December, on December 4th, there was a very successful AFRICOM out of Africa webinar that included women from four different African countries, as well as Margaret Kimberly of Black Alliance for Peace and Black Agenda Report. Uh, and uh, it was really a good webinar. And we want to, since there are so many military bases in Africa, uh, we want to do another uh, Africa I'm out of Africa. And at a meeting earlier today, I asked uh, Ganaka Lagoki. Uh, uh, by the way, Lucy, mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what's his country of origin? Um, Ivory Coast. Oh, Ganaka is from Ivory Coast? Yes, and it's pronounced Nyaka. Like yeah, like yeah, 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 Nyaka. Oh, Nyaka. Uh, so he's a professor at, I believe, Lincoln University. That is in correct. Uh huh. And so I asked him to be one of the speakers because he had a lot to say about Africa and China and lots of things. And so uh, he agreed that he could be available on December twentieth. And we've already asked Margaret Kimberly, but we didn't give her a date. So George, you have to get up with Margaret Kimberly and let her know uh, that the date is definitely December 20th uh, because we'll be dealing with people uh, in uh, the, uh, uh, on the African continent or in Switzerland. I think that Sylvie, in Goma, which is, uh, uh, she's the um, uh, president of Wilf International. And I believe she might be based in Switzerland at the International Secretariat, because I find that many of the African sisters uh, who are in leadership in Wilf are actually in Europe and not in their home countries. So uh, we're asking, her to be a speaker, Margaret Kimberly, uh, Ianaka, uh, um, uh, Sylvie in Goma, and Anne Wright. So I sent an email to Anne Wright today. And George, thanks for sending the open email to me with Marcy and Shea, uh, because I did write back to them that we wanted to reserve the time of 11 a.m. Pacific time, which would be 2 p.m. Eastern time on December 20th. Uh, so that should work uh, for most of the people like Margaret and Yanaka, uh, and of course, all of us are on Eastern time. So that's where we stand right now. Uh, with Africa, um, out of Africa and the webinar, because when we talked about adding this as part of the BOPA, uh, it seemed to be um, good, but we thought we'd just let it sit for a while and then have the consensus at this meeting, uh, but we can't have the consensus at this meeting. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to do it at the November meeting. Uh, so that's all I want to say about it, George, that we would plan to have a consensus 
for making Africa come out of Africa. But I envision uh, will U.S. being a co-sponsor and those of us in the BLC are uh, being mm -hmm. the organizers and the leaders of it. So George, uh, uh, the co-sponsors would be Cold Pink, BAP, and Will US. So that's the proposal uh, for the Africa um, Out of Africa webinar. And I think when we get to the November meeting of the BLC, we should be able to reach a consensus. But the organizing, the organizing of the webinar can't wait till the end of November. So I will go ahead and reach out to uh, um, Darian about will U.S. co-sponsoring. Uh, so we would have a clear answer on that. And George, it's up to you uh, to deal with the BAP pieces, including mm -hmm. Margaret and getting BAP to say they're willing to be a co-sponsor. Because we know Cole Pink, Cole Pink is already a co-sponsor. So can you do that, George? I can. I also want to give a chance for Stacy and Raven to say hello since we didn't have our formal check-in. So hi. They're hi. gonna run away and do laundry. Hello. Hey. Oh, uh, who was that? Let me see. Let me see Raven. Where's Raven? Put her back on the camera. Get closer to the camera, Raven. So <laughs> oh hey come on don't be shy raven get closer to george so we can see you come stand uh, here oh how old are you now raven i'm 18 oh that's so great to have the young people uh and so where's stacy let her stick her head in and say hi how you doing hey stacy so we got three members of the Southern Piedmont branch. They're really representing. And it's a family affair. Yeah, it is. Affair. So thank you, George. Thanks for letting me share the folks of the household that keep me moving and hopeful sort of in my own way. Um, so we're going to be holding the decision on the, well, adding that to the BOPA till the November meeting, correct? Well, I think that's what we have to do, George. Yes. Well, but we can talk together about needed updates for the strategy chart. So let me put up I the strategy I chart. I don't, I don't think we should uh, waste time with needed updates, uh, but we should go through and tell people what changes we made as members of the strategy team and what we have concerns about. So when we look at the goals for July of 2022 to June of 2023, which is the next year, the goals are a bit ambitious uh, because no work has been done on the anti-racism transformation. And in terms of getting 20 branches uh, to participate in reparations ordinances, I can't see it because I'm on my phone. So, George, am I reading it right? Is it 20 branches? It's 10, 10 branch cities. And I have a question about that. Uh, but you, you go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, what's your question? Well, um, so it's not, it's reparation ordinances in 10 branch cities. So that isn't 10 branches, it's branch cities. So here in the Piedmont, if we can get an ordinance in Gaston County and <clears throat> folks in Charlotte can get an ordinance in Mecklenburg County in Charlotte. Those are two cities where one branch, like Greensboro is one city and Winston-Salem's a different city. They're in the same branch. If those two could get ordinances, which I also don't see happening before June, but happening possibly before the next, you know, before the end of the UN decade, that would be four cities. And if we could uh, get well, Durham, which already has, I mean, so it, that's all. It's brand, it uh, says well, branch cities. Well, George, uh, we uh, have a member in Durham 
So in terms of the triangle, uh, Durham can be counted as a branch city. Something can happen there, but I don't know that anybody is working on it. I know that we're working here in Columbus, which would be great. Uh, and I think we're possibly uh, going to get something passed by 2023. But I think this is going to be a myth, a mixed, a missed goal. So I'm not sure what's happening in Cape Cod or what's happening in um, Burlington or some of the mm -hmm. other cities. So when we have the next UN decade meeting on November 17th, we will have a better assessment. Uh, but I'm thinking that goal possibly would need to be adjusted at some point, but that can wait until next year. But on the anti-racism transformation goal, I wish you would say something about that, George, because I think given nothing has been done on the anti-racism transformation work, I don't see uh, much happening there. So could you speak to that? Yes. Um, we both have to create our toolkit, which we've got a third to a half of, uh, to be able to start doing these anti-racism transformation um, visits, uh, capacity building with branches. And if we start with our branches who are represented in EDAC, that is a starting place that we can do beginning at the beginning of next year in places where it's not really super cold in January or February. And possibly, and this is a goal I'm trying to share with you all in terms of sh shifting the goal, um, in conversation with Samantha Turner, who's you know, one of the leaders in the branch here and also the convener for EDAC, we imagine and think, think actually think that we can get four to six. Samantha thinks we could get six before June, 2023. I think four is realistic. I think we could do um, hopefully Tucson and Humboldt before March and do Burlington and can't remember the other place in the north. Um, well, George, yes. uh, you have actually no contact and no work with them. I think we shouldn't spend this time kind of speculating, uh, speculating about it uh, because you and Daryl are the key persons for that piece of work. And Daryl, quite frankly, has been MIA. And I don't think you've spoken with him about what the toolkit looks like. So mm -hmm. let's not spend time kind of uh, um, making up stuff uh, uh, because the work simply hasn't been done. Uh, now on the other issue of member, recruitment, I think we're kind of on track. So at the end of this year, we should have recruited 100 new members this year in collaboration with branches. Uh, and so uh, that's something uh, that we can say we're clearly on track to do. Uh, so by um, June of 2023, we want to be at 100 new and 50 new members since we started the campaign. So from January of 2022 to June of 2023, we want to be able to count 150 new members. Now, Shante and I are working on that piece. Uh, and so I check in with um, Chris Wilbeck periodically, because starting up the uh, DC, uh, the DMV branch has been a big shot in the arm. And then there are other 
branches that are about to start up, like at Winthrop uh, University. Uh, and I think there was an effort in Chicago. I'm not sure what happened, uh, but there's a lot of kind of activity uh, going on. And so we should be uh, able to say we're at 150 uh, in terms of actual new members. Uh, and U.S. Program Committee Chair, George, since you're running unopposed, uh, you should be able to know for sure uh, that we are on target with that. Uh, but let's uh, move on to the strategic objectives because we made some changes there that should be highlighted. So in terms of activities and strategic objectives, George. George, so, it's your meeting. It's your meeting. Teresa, oh, I have a question. Do we have any relationship to Encobra? Uh, uh, several of us are members, and Mama Fatima is one of the key leaders in it. Uh, and so uh, um, I would say the answer is yes on a national level. Uh, and we have an Atlanta chapter here. Uh, and so, uh, but I'm in Columbus where there's no in Cobra chapter, uh, but the Fannie Lou Hamer branch is working on the reparations ordinance. Why do you ask about in Cobra? Um, because um, we have a, 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 well, I'm not sure if the, if the chapter is functioning here, but we have individuals who are very strong national voices here like uh, Nikichi Taifa. And Nikichi just got um, a regular Wednesday um, Wednesday uh, program on radio station WPFW. And she's been having some really dynamite programs. Um, and I was thinking if she could be recruited to this effort or if we could support an effort that um, that she and, and her uh, colleagues are working on, uh, that that would be good? Well, that should be done in the context of the DMV branch. So if you can recruit her to the DMV branch to work on uh, DC. Well, actually, I was thinking of more of, of people in Encobra uh, recruiting her to, uh, to be a member of Wolf. Well, you're in D.C. with her, so it has to happen with D.C. But I'm not a member of Encobra. Well, you don't have to be a member of Encobra to recruit her to Will. I think I think it would be good to have it be a, an Encobra Wilf kind of uh, effort. And I think it would be good to have Encobra members recruit her. Well, I disagree with you. Uh, because we're members based on where we live and the branches, and you're the branch organizer for the DMV branch, so you so should. I just told you. I just told you my opinion, so I'll leave it there. And you know, let's look well, at the chart. Oh, go ahead, Teresa. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Lucy is skirting her responsibility. No, I have a lot. I'm doing a lot of things, Teresa. I'm not skirting any responsibilities. I'm letting you know where I need help. And if you don't want to help, that's, you know. Well, I don't know her. Uh, so I'm not going to be asking her to join Will. Uh, so I hope that settles the question. Uh, so in terms of the activities, George. Yes, you want we have um, from July of this year to June of next year, we've got activities listed here that are past and some that are upcoming. Hopefully y'all can read those. Uh, our most recent one was our webinar, No to NATO. Of course, all of our steering committee meetings are listed here. November and December are not yet listed because we haven't set who will be facilitating those, who's the host for November, December BLC steering committee calls. We've got the upcoming, um, well, I say we, but it's not the BLC, it's the Fannie Lou Hamer branch on December 10th has the second annual human rights conference. We will add 
to this if the uh, BLC approves the BOPA, the AFRICOM webinar that will be in December as well. And upcoming activities going forward, building relationships with sections in Africa, of course, working on AFRICOM is a step to that. Teresa and Lucy both have relationships with people who are actually doing pan-African work here in the U.S., and that's an access point for us. And of course, the BLC and EDAC relationship building is something that's ongoing. And those are activities. Connecting with these young people is something that can happen. Uh, the word organically comes to mind. It's not the right word, but our president has a past association there. So those connections may happen. Strategic objectives. These are things that we either have accomplished or want to accomplish before June 2023. And hopefully y'all can read those starting with that we didn't raise at the International Congress in July. So we didn't get a procedure for conflict resolution. That didn't happen. We do have the EDAC established and staffed not fully staffed. We only have one representative for the Southeast, one for the Northwest and one for the Midwest. Ideally, we want two for each of these areas. The Fannie Lou Hamer Human Rights Conference was awarded a grant for the December conference. And I am running unopposed for the program committee chair. I'll be one of two chairs. When we're on that board before June of 2023, we will work to have a sliding scale membership approved. Any questions, comments? Uh, well, George, I think because you and Philip Cole uh, will be the two black members and the only people of color on the new board, uh, when it's seated in January of 2023. Uh, since uh, Philip has asked for a conversation with you, I think it would be very good on a programmatic level if you talk to him about advancing the sliding scale, because I know it would help a lot here. I have gifted a lot of memberships uh, but I need to slow down on my charity and gifting. So if we can get a sliding scale for low-income women, uh, which I'm surrounded by them, uh, it would be very helpful in terms of pe people being able to renew their dues uh, next year uh, when a bunch of low-income women's dues will come forward. So is that something you're willing to talk about with Philip in your upcoming conversation? I am willing to talk to Philip about it. I may not raise it on the conversation I'm having with him today because I'm not yet on the board, even though I'm running unopposed. And he requested the conversation. I want to know what he wants to talk about first. Um, I will absolutely bring it up when I am a board member, officially, but not before then. Um, yeah. Well, I think it would be good uh, to know what he thinks about the sliding scale, because if he's going to oppose you, it won't be helpful to bring it up. Uh, uh, I, you know, I think it was brought up and there was resistance uh, from the Europeans on the board. So if you don't have the lone black person on the board who's gonna support it, I would say don't bring it up in January uh, because what tends to happen and what happened uh, um, last year was that people who ran unopposed for seats that were vacant got placed on the board in November. So you may be on the board as early as November because the seat you ran for is vacant. So I see no reason 
to wait based on what their usual practice is for seating board members who are not uh, opposed into vacant seats. So you will probably get seated once the election results are announced. So you would actually be on the board as early as November. Hmm. We'll see. So any other? Oh, okay. Any other comments or questions about strategic objectives? Okay. Um, pardon me while I check the agenda. Okay. Hmm. Aha. So one of the things that Teresa and I do as co-conveners, we co-convene two of the ARH subcommittees, but also within DISARM, we started a no NATO work group. And that work group now, if, if anywhere, is housed with the, the Black Liberation Caucus because neither Teresa or I are affiliated with the Disarm Committee anymore. Is there well, anything you wanted to George, share about that? George, yes. that is not accurate. Uh, once the No NATO Working Group uh, uh, became independent from the Disarm in Wars Committee, uh, the women who were and are still associated with Disarm in Wars said they wanted to continue the No NATO Working Group. So we are a freestanding working group inside of the US section of Will. And the fact that you and I our BLC strategy team members are uh, co-convening it uh, is just uh, um, more of a, uh, we were the co-conveners before and we're the co-conveners now and we're doing the work. So together, you, I, and Nancy Price organized a very successful uh, No Tornado webinar and I did the advanced work of connecting with the uh, Wolf International Secretariat to make sure we had that Zoom account and that we negotiated through it uh, so that we made sure uh, that we had all of the European women uh, to speak and that Darian agreed that Wolf US could co uh, would be the sponsor, not co-sponsor, but would be the sponsor. So that was a major coup. And the success of the no NATO, no to NATO uh, meeting uh, is that we're connected with women uh, in peacemaking throughout Europe. And we're closely connected with Anne Wright, who is a will member, uh, but she's with, uh, a group called Voices of Dissent, as well as Veterans for Peace. So we're working very closely with Anne Wright. So that was a positive thing uh, to come out of the um, uh, No Tornado uh, webinar. But George and I assembly uh, co convenes so we organize the meetings. And the next meeting is scheduled for November 4th. So that's all I have on the note today though. Thanks, Teresa. Any questions, y'all? Comments? Hope you got to see the webinar. If you didn't watch, if you weren't there, I mean, um, you can see it on my YouTube channel. I think it's posted there. Oh no, it's posted on the posted on the Will channel. I can't remember. Uh, well, you you were supposed to send it to Ellen Thomas for posting on the Will channel. Yes. And the last I remember, she asked you for some kind of blurb, 
and I agreed to write the blurb, but I haven't done it. Uh, so if you could check to see if she still needs the blurb and where it's posted, uh, because it's been circulated widely, uh, because it was posted on the NOTA NATO uh, uh, international group. So everybody in the world has the video, including Great. you and me. Yes. Well, I found it on the Will channel, but I really had to look for it. And it was, it was, it wasn't obvious. It wasn't on their um, first screen. I had to go several screens in to find it. And if I wasn't looking for it and I didn't know exactly where to go, because I also have a YouTube channel, I don't think I would have found it at all. So someone yeah. just casually going there and looking for it will not find it unless Ellen moves it up in the queue so that you see it when you go there or you see it under recent recent videos. It wasn't under recent videos or anything. I'll work George, with her on it. George, I'll follow her up there, and we'll figure it out. George, there is no prohibition of you posting it on your YouTube channel. Great. You should just post it. Good. Because it was sent you because it was sent to you as one of the organizers. It was also sent to all the speakers, and they're posting it everywhere. So it's not an exclusive copyright or ownership for Will US. So please post it on your YouTube channel so you can easily direct people to it, given yeah. what you just described. Thank you very much. That's a perfect suggestion. Oh, so yeah, we, because everybody's posting it everywhere because all the speakers have it. Mm -hmm. All right. Do y'all have any announcements you want to share? We already mentioned yeah. that uh, December 10th event and December 20th, so you'll be looking out for your registration opportunities for those. Well, I do want to say uh, that after the struggle we had, with the mini grant committee about the Fannie Lou Hamer application earlier this year. It was very pleasant uh, to get the word that we've been given $2,500. So I'm looking for the check to be in the mail soon. So the Fannie Lou Hamer branch will use the money to pay our videographer uh, uh, who will be live streaming uh, the TPNW uh, uh, event, which is 9 a.m. until 10.30. Uh, and this would be important for the DMV branch to know uh, because Vicki Elson has confirmed as one of the speakers. And for the Triangle branch, uh, we have Patrick O'Neill, who's one of the speakers, and they will both be speaking as experts on everything nuclear. And we're inviting uh, members of the Black Congressional Caucus to the meeting. And Lucy, uh, we are inviting Eleanor Holmes Norton uh, to make comments. So I have her scheduler. So I will be sending, uh, now that I know we have the mini grant, uh, I will be sending um, uh, a request to her scheduler uh, for her to be in the meeting along with Sanford Bishop, Hank Johnson, and the woman who replaced uh, um, John Lewis in Atlanta. So we're hoping to have four Black Congressional Black Caucus members in the Fannie Lou Hamer Human Rights Conference for the 9 a.m. to 10.30 part. And then from 11, will be face to face uh, from 11 to two, where we're gonna have an EMI uh, um, discussion and an expungement event. So a bunch of people are gonna get their records clear in Columbus. Uh, so that's what's gonna be happening at the Fannie Lou Hamer Human Rights Conference. And we'll give an update at the next meeting uh, in November. So. Are we at the point, George, of deciding uh, who's gonna do or who will be asked to do? Yeah. Teresa, copy me on the correspondence to Eleanor Holmes Norton. 
because the people that I used to know who worked for her are now retired. Oh yeah, I'll be sure to do that. Uh, and I'll copy Vicki too, uh, since she's speaking and she knows Eleanor Holmes and Orton uh, very well. And she works with her office a lot. So I'll be sure to copy the two of you. I hope to be able to get that out on uh, Monday uh, because she has a really good staff. Uh, and when I asked her to come to our uh, uh, DMV uh, branch launch, uh, they were communicating quite a bit, but it was a scheduled conflict that couldn't be resolved. Uh, but they said, you have to ask us way in advance. So I'm going to ask them way in advance, uh, give them a, a month's notice uh, plus. Uh, so I'll be asking them on Monday or Tuesday, because uh, I do have the email of the scheduler. So uh, thanks for letting me know you want to be copied, because I will make sure I do that. So we, um, our next meeting is November 27th. And I am going to invite you, Donna Peel, to be the host of that meeting, because the DMV is gone and Cape Cod has not gone and we rotate and you're on the Zoom meeting now. So you get to be, you know, last month was, was Fannie Lou Hamer, this month is me. A Couple months ago was DMV, so it's your turn. Okay. All right, 27th of next month, I'll give you all kinds of support. So we'll be in touch, but- Is that Thanksgiving be... weekend? It's a Sunday after probably Thanksgiving, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you'll be home, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, George, for the offer for help. You're a blessing. Right well, you know, uh, George is our official uh, um, uh, tech person for all <laughs> of the meetings. So George keeps the list and she yeah. sends out the Zoom link to everybody. Uh, and so she'll be doing all of that work for you. All you have to do is show up and facilitate. That's how <laughs> good it is. And that's, that's how beautiful. easy. That's Great. How Thank you all. Thank you all. Sunday. Many oh, blessings. Have a, good Sunday. have a wonderful okay. week. Well, George, be sure to share uh, the recording to all the people who registered but did not show up. All righty, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.